there's lots of things happening today. So if you haven't had a chance to join us in the hands-on, welcome to our demo kitchen. This is where we just welcome everyone with open arms and hopefully we can teach you a few things, inspire you to be in the kitchen and just have some fun. Um, this next class is our chocolate tart. Yes. Chocolate tart, yes, after I was like, wait, this is it, right? <laughs> um, which is, seems like, especially when you see it, it seems like such a simple, easy thing, but there's lots of components to it that can make it a little bit tricky. Mm -hmm. And so um, when Josh was telling us what he was going to be doing, he's like, well, there's this component, this component, this component. I was like, yes. <laughs> this is right up my alley. I love to see all the different things that you can then take these and apply it to some of your own recipes. So if you really love the crust, you can take this and try it in other things, or the filling, or just the, the whipped ganache, right? There's yes. going to be so many de delicious things. Um, if you guys have not had the opportunity to be taught by Josh today, I want to introduce you to Josh. He comes to us from Chicago. He was representing Guitard, which is all of our favorite chocolate line, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he won't report back, but it does make him feel, feel extra special. Um, Guitar has been a huge part of our Orson Geeky family, and we're just so excited that it's become a lot of your tr family traditions as well. Um, and a lot of times you'll find that guitar is being used in a lot of um, chocolate shops and favorite restaurants. Um, and thanks to Josh and Vicki, who if you haven't met out on the floor, um, we get to sample that and try and get to know new things. And so one thing with Josh, um, if you guys do not know, is he has helped um, part of Guitar's like product testing, and so we get to try new recipes and be inspired through their recipes because of Josh and their team there, so that we know what to do mm -hmm. when we go have the delicious chocolate. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so thank you, Josh, for joining us and for for being a part of this. We, oh yeah, we, it's a blast. We love having you here. Yeah, the same. <laughs> um, but I'll turn the time to you, and okay. thank you all for joining us, and welcome to the Extravaganza. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so. Um, so yeah, chocolate tart is what we're gonna make today. And we're gonna do three different recipes. We'll do the shell, which <laughs> I um, I had my last demo ended, I don't know what time. And then it was like an hour or an hour and a half. And I'm like, that's so much time. I'm just not gonna do anything. And I forgot to prep what I was supposed to prep. Because I was standing out front, hanging out with Vicky and doing nothing. And so that's in the oven. And we're gonna walk through all the stages. None of this is a concern. We're gonna get it all done. So we're going to make a tart shell, a sable dough. Um, we are going to make the cake filling, which hindsight, I got to rethink the name, but I took the name from where I got it. I haven't used this recipe in like 20 years or more. And it's always in the back of my head. I never know what to do with it, but I, I have a box, uh, a guitar chocolate box, which is empty from chocolate, but it has all my recipes in it. And it's just, a, it's a mess of paper that's stacked on top of paper that's stacked on top of binders. And um, I have all those recipes in digital format, but I'm just, I'm the exact generation that still have trouble getting rid of all the hard copy papers. <laughs> and so they're just sitting there. And if you ask me right now, if I was in my house and you said, go get me this recipe right now, I would struggle so bad to find it. I know it's in there, but I'd have to flip through every section but then in the process, I'll find another recipe that I forgot I had, and I'll be like, oh, this is interesting. And I'll set it aside, and then I'm sidetracked like crazy. But the, just like this story I'm telling. Um, so the name, this recipe comes from um, this old school French, I just call it cake, because it's kind of what it is. Um, and fondant is like a melt in your mouth kind of thing, and I know we all think of the glaze when, when that's mentioned. And um, But so take the name, change it to what you want. But um, but it is like the perfect classic old school French recipe. Like, and you'll see when you taste it, I, I hope. I haven't tried the samples yet, so hopefully they're good. Um, but when it's baked well, you know what I mean well, I mean baked just until it's done. It has the best melt in your mouth, rich, chocolatey, almost like chocolate flourless, because I think there is no flour in it. Um, but it's fantastic. And then on top of that, we'll put a whipped ganache. And so, easy recipe, super easy recipe, the whipped ganache. Um, and that can be used for multiple things. You can call that mousse and serve it to people. They don't, they don't know. It's, it's whipped cream, it's chocolate. They don't, they don't know what's in their cup. You know, just, they know what you tell them. And so, this is, this, I've learned that over the years, to not get too obsessed with what I make and try to, I learn uh, who to, when certain people come over, I learn how much to describe what they're about to eat or not. 
you know, oh, that's a such and such chocolate tart with, with, with milk chocolate using 38%. Oh, that's chocolate pie with chocolate mousse on it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and they don't know, they don't care. As long as it tastes good, you know? So, so I'll keep this, the first half, I'll keep it simple. I'm gonna roll, or mix the dough quick, and um, we'll see if it's chilled enough to roll because I use my prep dough. I, you know the whole story already, it's in the oven. Um, you know what, I could use the roll of plastic wrap, if you don't mind, because I'm gonna put my dough onto it. Please. Okay, so, simple, super simple. Butter, sugar, Yolks, eggs, salt, flour, um, just a little bit of butter. This is, I'm not here to promote a butter, but one of my favorite butters that I've been using for a while is Plugra. Um, but I'm fortunate I can buy it at Restaurant Depot. Thank you so much. I can buy it at Restaurant Depot and, and it's cheaper than cheap butter at the store, so I'm super lucky. But um, high fat butter will make a difference. And it's not night and day. This is for you to decide on, this is for you to like fool around, take your most simple recipe, take chocolate chip cookies, which I don't think is a simple recipe at all, but take something that's basic like that, which I don't think is basic at all, and fool around with different ingredients. Buy a really nice butter and make the same cookies you always make. Um, and see what difference it makes, it can't hurt. I think in our lives, <clears throat> that's the thing that we're very fortunate, I don't know if fortunate is the word, I think we're able to treat ourselves to some things in life, and I think a simple ingredient change in a recipe, it makes so many people happy sometimes, in small ways. Whether it's just you're letting them become a part of your tasting process, or, or whatever. We were just talking about cars earlier. I love cars. I can't just go buy a new engine, an engine that I want to put in my truck. It's 10,000, 15,000, I can't do that. But I can, I can buy expensive butter and make cookies one time. You know? <laughs> I can buy, I can buy, um, butter for biscuits, whatever, it's, we can afford that once in a while. And I try to, I, I temper that with knowing that everyone's in different situations, and um, but I do a lot of, starting to do more and more work with outreach program with kids. And I can't say that to the kids is easy, because depending on the neighborhoods, where they come from, but in the grand scheme of things, if, it's, if we put everything we got and make one recipe with one nice ingredient, I think it's a thing we can all relate to. Um, anyways, Flugra. So, Cream this together, the butter and the sugar. Very standard mixing method. Don't leave butter if you can catch it. Farmer milk that, well, a machine milk that cow. Um, it, went, it has a journey. Try not to waste product. Inevitably, it happens in demos, but you know. So, cream that. Plugra, P-L-U-G-R-A. Translated, it literally means, wait, more fat, I think. Uh, it's a Pennsylvania, I think it's born in Pennsylvania. Uh, farmers, what's the organization? Dairy Farmers of America. A bunch of, it's a co-op thing where they gather, you know, like co-op, a bunch of cream and they make the butter. It's a great, it's, it's culture. And I love cultured butter. Okay, so I'm not used to tilt. So you gotta scrape it. I stop and scrape it halfway part of the way but for me this is your um, this tarto is your tarto for anything for um, fresh fruit tart for like an almond crunch bun tart do you like almond crunch bun tarts oh, yes. it's the best ever right just simple apple or pear or whatever's in season wait what is it salted or always unsalted I'm really picky about the salt, about salted butter and the flavor that it, it, it brings with it. And then the reason I argue for unsalted butter is because I'd rather choose the salt I use. My favorite salt ever is kosher diamond, uh, diamond kosher salt. Super clean, it's not very harsh. Um, I am concerned sometimes with how much salt I put in items and then if someone goes back and uses iodized salt, I'm afraid their face might fall off when they eat one of my cookies because it's, I put a lot of salt in my chocolate chip cookies, but it's, it has this great depth to it. Um, and I think it's, I think salt is, uh, is a very important thing. So yeah, unsalted. Okay, so eggs, the rest of the eggs. <clears throat> this recipe also, I fooled around with it a little while ago just to see if I can't change flowers. And I've been on a, whole grain kind of kick to try to do different recipes lately. And I swapped out 
the flower. And I write King Arthur only to, so I can reference, a, 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 um, or have a reference point. I love King Arthur flower. I'm not here to sell King Arthur flower. Just so if you were to say, if you were to want to know the specs of it, you know that that's an 11.5% protein flour, just for reference. Okay. King Arthur all purpose. Their all purpose flour on the shelf is commercial, commercially known as Galahad, and it's a flour that people just go nuts about. It just, it, it's a great all purpose, um, I mean clearly that's what it says. It's sold as bread flour when it's Galahad, but on the shelf it's all purpose. Retail, all purpose, industrial, bread flour. Makes great, pretty good pizza dough, depending on how much fat, if you put fat in your dough. Red bag? Red bag, yes. Red. red. Their bread flour in the blue bag is pretty harsh. It's strong mm -hmm. stuff. You gotta be making something with elasticity for that. Okay, I think we're good. Are you thinking about your eggs? What's that? Are you thinking about your eggs? What about my eggs? Are you thinking about your eggs? Oh, I mean, yes, no. I so when I do recipe testing, that's a little light. We can go with it. So cool sound. My when I do recipe testing. I don't buy the cheapest eggs because I want to try to support a farming system that I hope is better. But with labeling these days, we don't know. Cage free doesn't mean anything. Um, pasture raised. I mean. Hopefully that means something anymore. Organic doesn't mean anything anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I do buy middle of the road, but guitar is paying for them. <laughs> I don't buy, like, uh, I love Vital Farm eggs. I love Vital Farm. That's when I eat. I don't make all my recipes with those, but I eat those. Yeah, I like to eat those. Totally different than oh, it's totally different. So you can tell that, that it's, happy. it's a happy chicken. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of the flour. I add like maybe 25% and start a pasty dough. But I am one of those people that I get stuck in the grocery store looking at labels a lot. Um, I like to go to butter sections. If I go to a, a store that is in a different town, I just wanna see what butter they have. Um, have any of you had Vermont Creamery butter? So salted butter, that's my absolute favorite salted butter because they use good salt that's it's fantastic you can just eat it uh, by the spoon oh. <laughs> <laughs> what vanilla do you like i like vanilla and butter yeah choices, like, i like nielsen massey but there's a connection i know um the nielsen massey i know beth i know i know matt and i know their brother not as well because i can't think of his name right now craig um and so they tell me about their practices, and that makes me happy, what they're doing and what they do in the community. So I like that, but I do like the product a lot. Um, and so that's what I, I buy that. It's pricey, it's pricey. But um, guitar pays for it right now, so. But to be totally honest, I have started cutting it out of certain recipes that don't, if it's not gonna shine through, I don't waste my time putting it in there because it's such a hot commodity, you know? Um, it's and I'm not gonna put it I'll put it in recipes sometimes I didn't put it in here I just don't want to I don't want to be that one that's always saying vanilla goes in everything I think it's great but it's out of a lot of price ranges you know and, and that's I totally get that Prova is another good brand I don't know if Prova is a retail or not but they're also good <clears throat> yes It's, it really depends on the chocolate, but um, if I was going to put it in a chocolate as a ganache, that chocolate might be um, heavy on the milk chocolate. It'd probably be milk chocolate ganache. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it so it does shine through, and if it's the right, if it's a milk chocolate that's not too crazy caramely, then it will come through nice. Maybe with a pinch of salt as well, but it'll shine through. Dark chocolate, I've had it, I'll tell you this. I did a competition years ago where I had to do, one of the things I had to do was uh, bonbons. So I do showpiece and bonbons and then I forget what else. Um, and I had a vanilla ganache. It was with dark chocolate. It was with our 61%, our wherever it's at. Um, it was very good, but if I tell you how much vanilla is in it, you'll, you'll be just like, 
your head will explode. I mean, very small recipe because I it's very you have to be careful. I'm not worried about overmixing this. I'm gonna just get it thorough. You have to be careful with waste. Judges will judge you on waste. And so I had it scaled down to where I'd make one frame, one plaque of bonbons, that's the vanilla ganache, barely enough to fill all of them with maybe 10% more. So just a tiny bit that just barely fit in here was my extra ganache. In that small recipe, thank you, the small recipe, I think I had two full beans in that small recipe. No, no, that's a lie, because this is exactly what I did. I had one Madagascar, I had one Mexican, and I had one Tahitian. Three beans in that ganache. If you try to sell that in your shop or your home, out of your home, you're gonna go, you're gonna go broke. Um, I made my own vanilla, it's not cheap to make vanilla, no. you can't go back. No, it's, you can't. How and long? You got this one of the Ecuadorian, you got this one that's Madagascar, you got this one that's Tahitian, like, don't touch it. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna dump some in my coffee or something. No, you're not. You're going to leave my house. <laughs> <laughs> then you take the beans and you put in the sugar. And then you yeah. Yes. Well, and the beans, if you, um, the beans, so I was always taught to every scrap, every single, of course you scrape them as, as best you can. Some people like to put them in liquid if they're going to steep it into ice cream base or whatever. By the way, the more you can use vanilla cold, the better. Um, if you're going to do vanilla ice cream base and you want a great <clears throat> vanilla flavor, Put it in at the end, but just know that you can't, you shouldn't spin that today. You should give it time to uh, steep or whatever, infuse, whatever the word is. And, um, but uh, vanilla doesn't like heat. It, it, it starts to kill the compounds that make all of those flavor notes in it. And vanilla is not just vanilla. You know, it's got a lot of stuff going on in it. Okay, so this is it. Dough, no big deal. The only thing I want to show you about this, I don't know if we'll get back to rolling this because of timing. Don't carry over mix. I mean, I mean there is over mixing, but oftentimes what I do is not mix it. Here's what I mean. Let me rephrase that. Oftentimes I'll do this thing where I mix it until it's just combined, and then I take it out, and there's all kinds of dry stuff on the bottom. Give it a couple more, several more spins, and it's not gonna, it's not gonna abuse it so much. This shell, can you see on a viewer? No, I'll bring it over here. This shell is um. Hard to see. You can see it shrank away a little bit. This is um, two times rolled dough, and it didn't shrink much more than the first batch that you're going to eat. So it can take some abuse without really changing. So this does have to be ice cold. Blah, 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 blah. Nah, no, no, oh. no. I don't do ice cold butter and stuff with this recipe, and cut it in carefully. This and that. Nah. The only I thing like I you. do. <laughs> What's that? I like you already. Uh, I like shortcuts. Uh, when I do something particular, it's only because I found no other way. And I'm like, I gotta do it this way. The one thing I like to do for storage though, this is this this was born out of laziness, is I like to thank you, thank you. I like to do this if I can. Get the air bubbles out, roll it. This is how I like to store it. I don't do this all the time at home because I don't have a space in my fridge. But in my shop, we used to roll sheets of this. Like, it doesn't take you that much time once you get a system down. I don't care the shape of it, unless I have one exact thing I'm going for. Because you imagine, if I, the way I roll dough, but you gotta pull the plastic out of it, it kinda rolls under it. You can do this in between parchment paper. If you don't like plastic wrap, I hate plastic wrap. I'm sad that it's such a huge part of our industry. Because it's, it's gonna be, when the end of, end of the world comes, we're all going to be, it's going to be a giant saran wrap balloon that captures the earth and we're going to be suffocating from saran wrap, you know? <laughs> that might be a little extreme, but it's not far from it. And that's it. And anyways, that's a little, not, not my best roll, but that's not final. I'll take it out later and finish it to not much further than that. But the reason I like this is because I can stack it up and then freeze it. Oh, I, need, I only need to make so many tar shells. I'll pull one sheet out, pull two sheets out. There's no re-rolling and banging on the table and all that stuff. Forget that. May I have a half? Wait, oh, you know what? Never mind. No, we'll work with this. You can. Oh yeah, you can store it in the freezer for a hundred years. <laughs> can, you do, uh, can you do that with pie dough as well or with the short hand? Yeah, no, no, no problem. You can do it with the pie dough. I'm all about 
cookie dough, all my cookie dough goes in the freezer. I bake my cookies from the freezer. I don't thaw them. People are like, ah, oh, thaw them, smash them. No, I put them in the oven, bake them. Whatever happens, that's meant to be, you know? <laughs> Who am I to get in the way of the fate of the cookie dough? So, okay, we'll knock that one out. How uh, thick was that? Thick? How thick was the roll? Little over, little over an eighth of an inch, I'd say. Some, sp some spots were, let's call it a quarter. Let's go thick. A quarter, good. Now, if you have, a, if you have, but you can, take some of this back. If you have rulers that you can roll the dough in between, nylon rulers, roll it out now. Like, I don't have any gauge. I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. So, um, if there's time, I'll roll one if you want to see it rolled. But, um, but get your rulers out, wham, wham, roll it thin, and stack them up. Scoop another thing out of the bowl, roll, roll, keep stacking it. Just don't get so nitpicky that you want all the corners square. Maybe you need that, it's a different story. But just bang it out, it's rolled. And then you're gonna cut all your shapes and use it, and then you can use it a second time. You can probably use it a third, but what I was taught in um, my career was, this is from my grandpa, if it's third and fourth time rolled or whatever, throw that into the next batch. It'll just blend right in, into the creaming part of it. Okay, next recipe is this, uh, whipped ganache. I'm gonna try to keep on time. What are we, 2.30 today, right? 2.30 is the time? 2.45, five o'clock? <laughs> oh, because it's my next demo. So I'm only uh, sabotaging myself. Uh, I wanna get to the cake right away. So, whipped ganache, very easy. Couple important steps. Forgot one thing, so I'm gonna use that. I like something to blend it in. Um, I'm addicted to these. I hate that too. It's, this is just me saying it out loud. This is where I start. It's 10 steps or whatever. I need to get rid of plastic containers, but they're convenient. Okay, so uh, I need a spatula. May I have, I'm gonna use this one for the first half. I would take another one, please. Okay. I'm gonna, this is gonna drive me nuts, but I'm gonna do it. Do you need anything else? Just a spatula. I think just a spatula. Okay. Okay, heavy cream. There's an ingredient I wrote in there that's gonna bug you. Invert sugar. It might not bug you, I don't really know. That's that's an online thing. You'd have to go like to a restaurant supply, like a, like a chef rubber thing or something. But um swap that with honey. You know, the same sweetness. Sweetness. So invert sugar is a sugar used in a lot of confections for shelf life, like little tea cakes. Um, it really helps retain moisture in a baked good as it's sitting on a grab-and-go shelf, for example. In this case, thank you very much. You're welcome. It also has a lot of um, emulsification properties, so it'll help really keep this cream nice and tight and emulsified. But um, it's not a deal breaker. But uh, the, the problem with, with um, invert sugar is it's very sweet. Compared to granulated sugar, if you look at granulated sugar at 100% sweet, that's our marker. Um, invert sugar is 126%. Honey is also in the same sweetness. So swap out honey and be totally fine. It'll add a little bit of flavor, but who doesn't like honey? As I say that, maybe half of you hate honey or something. <laughs> so have you ever found that dried sugar that's partially invert sugar? Yeah. Is that where? Is, that, is, that, is it powdered form? It is dried form, and it, you know you can mix it and do your maraschino cherries and stuff like that. So okay. it's like regular sugar plus invert sugar. Okay. 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 You know, there's probably not a lot of invert sugar in it. The reason the invert sugar in, is in it is so there's a term invertos, and that's where the invert. That's the that's the ingredient. That's the I don't know exactly what it is. It's nothing crazy sciencey, but so the reason it's in that is because you'll make, so it's probably not a lot. You're probably just enough to do this. Yeah, yeah, maybe that. But the reason it's in that is because you're gonna dip your cherry in the fondant, it'll set up and have a shell, right? And then over time, over time it's gonna invert it. It's gonna turn it liquid. And so that's what invert sugar is. Invert sugar is, was a solid sugar that is inverted into um, a liquid. A thick liquid in this case. Honey is the same thing, but bees so do all work. this sugar is going to be a liquid, it's not a powder. It's a pasty liquid. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it comes in a bucket and it's just um, one of those things that kind of separates Did a little bit. Do they sell it you know, I don't, I'm pretty sure they don't. We talked about it earlier and so um, 
that's why I actually remember to say something right away about swap out with honey and you'd be totally fine. Can because you, use corn syrup or is that a no -no? you can't use corn you can you can replace it with corn syrup, but what and it will probably work totally fine. Actually not probably, it'll work fine. Your sweetness is the only thing affected, but I doubt it'll even bother you. Uh, glucose and corn syrup are fifty percent as sweet as sugar. So if you're just looking for something to fill that spot volume wise, fine, throw it in there. It, no one's if someone comes to your dinner party and you're like, wait a second, this, isn't a sweet this doesn't have invert sugar in it, then, then you're like, get out. Yeah, I'll buy you a car. You know, but it's not gonna. It'll be sold as setting up. It's not gonna be effective. Nah, not at all. Because you're you're relying um, simmer first, whatever the cream, the two sugars, chocolate. You can pour it over the chocolate. I do this as a little insurance step in case this is lacking heat or I'm talking too much. I'll throw it in here. And then I'm going to put it in my deli container. Um, yeah, better yet, if they say that, then just then you just everyone stops speaking, and that's when you tell them to leave. Don't ever come back to bed. Okay. Give them a bill. Yeah. <laughs> Stir that up. And again, the reason this is a little small of a recipe, so I always keep these kind of things in mind. We talked about this with tempering chocolate last demo, where mass means something. So if I'm only going to bring to a simmer a small amount of cream and pour it over a certain amount of chocolate, I hope it still maintains that energy to melt it. That's why I kind of I changed my mind and dumped it in here. If I'm heating up um, 30 liters of cream and I'm going to pour it over X amount of chocolate, that has a lot of energy and it's going to hang on to that heat for a while. So this is looking great. It's all chunky. I don't need to emulsify it in here. I just need to know there's enough heat to melt everything. Dump it in there. I made this recipe um, for some, I had to do a virtual demo, which is very hard because there's no one in front of you except a camera. These people on Instagram and their influencers, I very impressed with the ability to be animated on camera to keep doing what they're doing one day is all I need no uh, no no more of this and it's we do it for Fred Baker's Guild so I'm happy to do it um, but um, no one laughs when you say a joke you know? <laughs> <laughs> and if I laugh then I look stupid because I'm laughing at my own <laughs> okay this is one of your best tools ever who is in for the tempered chocolate Yes, especially I like this. It's my favorite ever. There's great ones that don't have that. This is shorter life, I guess, on them. But I've had this thing for longer than I can remember. It's got a damaged wire somewhere. I've been meaning to fix it. I hate it, but I love it because <laughs> it doesn't let me down wherever I go. Okay, it sounds weird sometimes. Okay, so next step is cold cream that I took out already there. Keep it chilled until you need it. Even though we're gonna chill this overnight, it's just a little bonus. So blend this, get the bubbles out. Make sure it's all the little pieces are gone. Got a bubble again. And then Also the reason I like this is because now I need an extra hand, but I don't have the big heavy thing tilting on my, that dance you do when you try to set the whole thing up and then walk away from it and hope it doesn't cover your floor. Why we do stuff like that? Well, it's not going to fall. I did that with a container of raspberry puree in my house not long ago. Oh, it's like a murder scene? It was, it's pretty bad looking. And it's one of those things. I don't know about you, but when that happens to me, I just like stood there <laughs> and I'm like, I give up, but I can see it continuing to run to, you know, so you can't give up. yeah, I can't give up. I'm not supposed to give up. I'm not supposed to be an adult. <laughs> All right. That's it. This is how, that's it. You can drink it right now or you can um, store it in the cooler overnight. The sides are a little funky, but I'm going to, I'll scrape those. And be careful also because there is a little bit 
I like scraping everything. There's a little bit on the head of the, get that stuff off, because there's some decent chocolate on there. But it's blended enough where it's all gonna, it'll mix together just by hand now. My grandpa. My brother would be proud. <laughs> huh? my, I learned this from my grandpa, like um, in a hard, in a difficult way. <laughs> a big fight broke out in the kitchen once because he found some strawberries. I didn't cut enough. I, did, I cut too much of the green off. I just threw them in the garbage. He found them. It was as rough. It was a rough afternoon after that. He went nuts. In a grandpa way, it's all loving and good. Scrap the sides. My grandpa, we used to wash parchment paper. Wash it in the sink, in the three compartment sink. And I'm just like, how much does this cost compared to my hourly labor, even as a kid? It doesn't make sense. But that wasn't the point. That was the wax on, wax off thing. That wasn't the point. <laughs> I didn't ask those questions. I'm not going to ask logical questions. Okay, well, that's done. Don't whip this today. Whip this. Um, give it overnight to chill. And the idea is why. What are your thoughts on whipping cream? The science behind it. Why, why do I chill it overnight? I don't mean to put you on the spot. I just like conversation. Thoughts? Any thoughts? What? That one I don't know. So the reason do you want to check out if the how the how the how the squares if the squares are all cut? Just out of curiosity. They're, they're almost, almost done. Almost done? Yeah. Okay, no sweat, we're going to the cake. We can always stop. So we'll come back and whip that in a second. We'll whip it fresh and scoop it from the bowl and then we're gonna we're gonna decorate the samples you get to finish off that demo. So let's make a cake. So the reason for whipping of cream. Um, what for salt? So lady, it's a, the O R is missing. That's our milk chocolate. Um, if you're interested in the taste of it, we have it set up on the table out front with Vicky. It's a really nice caramely milk chocolate. Has some nice dairy to it, but I really like the caramely notes that it brings. Do I need that? I need that, and I need that. And I need that. I'll, re I'll recycle. Okay. You need a new bowl. <laughs> I have a bowl here. Oh, perfect. I have the bowls here. Perfect. Grandpa would be happy for this too. So, let me get my head straight, then I'll talk about what I was talking about. Okay, so, butter, cream, yolks. Butter, cream, yolks, whites, sugar. I haven't counted my recipe ingredients all day. It's a good habit to make. Once I was doing a demo, and before the demo, I needed some salt. I didn't know how much salt. I'm like, just put it in a container and I'll just, just do it as I go. That, that's not how it went. Um, it was time to add the salt. I just need a little bit. I had like 20 grams of salt to a recipe. It didn't need, it didn't need two. So that was the end of that demo. Or at least no one was going to eat that stuff. Okay, so this recipe goes like this. Melt together the the butter and the cream. Bring that just to a simmer and we're going to add the chocolate to it and get that nice and melted. And does this water doesn't unscrew it? Oh, okay. I'm going to make a steam bath. I'm going to get this going for insurance for this chocolate mixture that I'm about to make. Just in case I don't like the temperature, we'll go on the heat. And we can always use the fire, but Heat, uh, steam is more gentle. <clears throat> Butter, cream, chocolate's ready to go. I use a 72% in here, not 100% necessary. Um, the one chocolate that I, well, several that would work great, but there's a chocolate actually that's outside there in, on our table. It's our 66 organic. And that's one of my favorite chocolates that we have. I think that would be killer in this recipe. Um, anything in the 60s range would be fine. 70s, great. 60s, um, we have a 61, 64, but I was gonna recommend those, but I changed my mind to where I forgot we had the organic out there. That 66 is, is fantastic. Um, but also we have a 74. That's a really punch in the face, strong chocolate. It's also our organic. Very good as well. Both of those would work nicely. The one you're going to taste is a 72% range, just for reference. 
if you taste it, if you want to taste it. Okay, a little more heat. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna dump the chocolate in there to use the energy from the metal pan to just make sure everything's melted. The next step is gonna be adding the egg yolks to that mixture. Now we gotta pay attention to temperature. I don't want anything too cold because I don't wanna seize all those fats back up again. Just to a simmer, no more than that because you're losing water. Water is, as any recipe, water is very important. Stop it. Give that, let that, stir that in and then give it a second to do its thing. So just let, let it take the heat in. Sugar and egg whites are over here, so let's get that set up. We don't need meringue right away, but we should start it. So we have, we have a running start. It's foamy already. Whip. So the cream, when you whip cream, the only reason cream whips is because when you whip cream, air is incorporated, but the only reason air is able to be incorporated is if it's cold. Because the fat that's in cream, okay, let's just go with that. Sometimes you get a look and it seems more than it should, but I made a different batch, so it's throwing me off. The fat in cream is butter fat, okay? The technical term of the little pieces are globules in cream. So when you stir cream to incorporate air, you incorporate air, but that air needs to be held by something. It's, the air doesn't just happen. So when you whip cream, uh, it's surrounded by little globules of fat, protecting each air bubble. And it gives it uh, a strength. And that way all the air bubbles can stack on top and you create volume and you have whipped cream. That's whipped cream. Same thing is, is here. But now we have chocolate um, cocoa butter in it. So we chill it so that those fats are nice and strong. So when we whip, whip it, it'll actually hold air. Same as regular whipped cream. So if you need this whipped ganache in a hurry, that's okay. Put it on an ice bath. Put it in a metal bowl and a metal bowl, ice bath it until it's really cold. And you're fine to whip it. Huh? How long can it be stored? It can be stored for... Oh, uh, yeah. Now it can be stored. I wouldn't freeze it. Too much water in it. I'm afraid it would break it. Um, I don't want to make any quotes on that, uh, especially. But um, I make it three, four days in advance easily. Because it's relatively cold. If you wanted... When we're talking bacteria and stuff. That's not hot, but it's not really cold right now. You could ice it even to give you another day out of it. Every temperature that you can gain in uh, every time every time you can make something colder and colder it's going to buy you time um, as far as bacteria and shelf life I don't like doing um, I like adding all the sugar if you add the sugar early what you're doing is think about this when you add the sugar early that sugar dissolves in the egg whites in the water and it becomes part of the meringue it's melted it's now of this cohesive mix of albumin and, and, and sugar. So, sugar is a solid content or solid material. So it's really good strength. If I wait and add it too late, imagine I add it at the very, very end. The very end. Uh, it's almost ready. Let me sprinkle my sugar in. Now what you have is... Sorry, I'm trying to keep in mind the camera. Oh, no, you're fine. Now what you have is um, meringue with sprinkles of sugar in it. If you dissolve it in there, even more strong. I'll put it in early. All right, we're ready to start going. So this is all melted. I need a whisk to emulsify it. And yolks go right after this. Melted, looks great. I'm gonna give you a number, just for a reference. If you get distracted and something happens while you make this, you can always reheat this mix that I'm about to this mix right here. You can reheat it if you have to. Because if you let this get too cold, it doesn't blend well with the delicate egg whites. You have this dense mixture. It'll work. It'll be okay. But you want the, the really light area inside. So, um, Celsius, I gotta do the math, but 50 degrees Celsius, let's say 52 degrees Celsius, is a good number to fold the egg whites in around there. You don't have to like dial in like Nassau or something. Um, but that's a safe number where, again, 
something comes up, you have to set this aside and walk away and you come back and it's seized up, it's really cold, put it back on the stove and warm it back up because it'll take the meringue 10 times better. And what this is, I don't know what temp this is right now, I'll tell you, 43, so it's pretty cool. So I got some time, so this is gonna work perfectly for the timing of that. It's a little gnarly looking, can you see? No, what if I do? Oh, what about that one over there? Oh, that's all camera. All right, no biggie, let me do this. I don't know if you can see it. Does it look shiny and broken to you a little bit? Keep going. It will smooth, smooth, it will get smoother. But that tells me that it's kind of cold, so. See, it's getting tighter, it wants to come together. Let me speed this up. Another reason that this could be broken is if you boil the cream mixture too long. Water is a huge part, is a very important part of any motion, super important. So if you take the water away, there's nothing to bind with the fat. All right, let's get to the other The timing is going to be really good. Also, if you drop down to the 60th percent, I think we're good. It's almost, it's not mousse-like because it's so dense, but it's come together and it's smoother now. It's pretty tight, but it's smooth, shiny, perfect. When you drop down to a 60s-ish, you're gonna lose cocoa butter. So that'll make this a little bit of a softer emulsion. It won't be as tight as this one is, less fat. May I have another bowl with the whip, please? All right, we're good. I don't know what that is, medium? Soft-ish, Dairy Queen? <laughs> Okay. Bad habit. Turn the fire off. Okay, so uh, put by three parts, more or less. Get rid of this. Save this for the end. I like a whisk folding in the beginning. This is your sacrificial. Forget volume with this first one. But a whip is great for folding. Pick it up, drop it through the whisk. Don't worry about this super like crazy folding technique of, oh, I don't want to crush any of the egg whites. You're going to lose some on this first one. It's good. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, the one for the machine, actually, oh, for whipping them. Yeah. Every time you go for more whites, freshen them up. They get creamy a little bit. Fold that in. And now it's soft enough that I'll finish with the um, spatula. Make sure the sides are clean, I mean, um, of chocolate. Freshen that up. Make sure at the end there's no uh, pockets of egg whites. What time we got? 2.19. Fold that in. Looks like mousse, huh? It does. This would probably be good just as it is, honestly. I'm looking for streaks now. I want a, I want a fairly even consistency. I don't. It doesn't need to be so homogenous that you start losing and losing volume. Like at some point, you gotta call it. Oh, I shut the oven off. That's the stove. But actually, it would be. This is gonna take a little while to bake. But I'll, I'll explain to you. Are nice cuts. In the pan it goes. 
What temperature did I write for you? Did I write low temp? I hope. Three twenty-five. That's it. Three twenty-five. Uh, if preferably, well, I don't know. A nice soft heat is good. So if you can do conventional, that'll be less harsh on this than convection. So three twenty-five. You're gonna bake it until you can do the knife test, like a brownie. I don't I don't want it super dry. I want it when you comes out, it's still gonna be a little bit wet, but you can even dig into the center a little bit to take a look in there. You're gonna cover it with something. You don't want liquid batter, but in a perfect world, the edges will be a little bit set and the, the center will be still a little bit soft. That's your bake. If you bake it fully, you'll be okay, but you get more of a melt in the mouth with the really light bake. Yes. Yeah, and a full bake on that. That was a little bit light, but it's still gonna have crispness. Bake that. Then we're gonna bake it again at 325. 325. Yeah. And t today I baked that tart shell 350 just to blast it through. 325 is always a better temp for dough like that because it's slow bake. It's all the color in there, and then you get more flavor that way. But, but how long are you baking this? This one? Depends on the size. This is the tricky part. Do you make a quarter pan or are you making a round tart pan? Or are you gonna bake it, I didn't say this, but you can bake this in individual souffle dishes. And then if you grease them, you can bake it in souffle dishes, chill it, and then tap it out and it could be part of a plated dessert. So the timing is hard. That quarter sheet pan is gonna be about 25 minutes more or less. And you know, we all know every oven is totally different. Keep that in mind. But um, I would recommend just for starters, maybe just to get a feel for it, I might recommend doing this just in a dish to get the feel for the bake and see what it's like. Um, I baked it in a round tart last time I did it. And for some reason that gave me a really good read more than I did, more than I did yesterday with, with these. But this is the best volume, the nicest mix I've ever had. And I warmed it up with this whole babble I just told you about with keeping it warm. This is the best volume I've had, nice and clean and even, but it was a little harder to tell when it was baked. So I had poked a hole in there. It was wet, but it wasn't liquid. And so this is gonna be one that you're gonna have to make, your, make it your own recipe and get your feels for it. But I think you're gonna like it. Um, ganache, whip ganache, whip it like whipped cream. Is that gonna be enough? No. Oh, for the, if I had a ramekin, I would look at, um, if I had a ramekin, I would check it after 8 minutes. It might be an 8 to 12 minutes. And keep in mind, ramekins are thick, so that takes time too, right? Alright, so, when you whip this, the only thing to be careful of is, depending on what you're going to do with it, if you really want it to hold its shape, you got to pipe it when it's stiff, firm peaks. But the smaller the tip you use, the more that cream is being forced through the bag, the more it's still going to work itself. So don't be, if it starts to break a little bit in your hands and it's not looking smooth, it, it's the heat on your hands, it's the pressure forcing it through. So go a little bit lighter than, like that's it. If you're putting it into a cup as a topping, just go right in there. It's super great. And it firms up after a little bit of time in the cooler as well. It firms up more. Can I ask a favor? Mm -hmm. has a, can, you, can you fold that? <laughs> Thank you. If your shop has someone that you can do this with, that's a very, you, you have a great budget. <laughs> Thank you. Are you all ready to eat? Mm -hmm. Can you move it over a little bit? You, you, you are all so needy. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> How's that? How's that? He was a baker. 
He was a different kind of baker. Like when I think of bakers now, I think of artisan baker, everything from scratch. He was in the generation, the hotels he worked at were Hyatt Hotels in the Chicagoland area, right in the era of when everything started to become more brown and serve, scoop certain fillings from buckets and stuff. I'm not taking away what he did, but um, so I learned different things from him. I learned how to roll dough by hand a lot. I learned certain recipes, but I, it was work ethic that I took from him and my uncle. My uncle started a shop when I was young. I worked there. That's how, that's why I was working with my grandpa. What tip are you using? I think it's... Eight, oh, what? 804? 806. 806, nice call. <laughs> if, if, you, if you held like a crusher over my truck and said name it, I would just say crush it. I would not have guessed that. I don't like that truck that much anyway. <laughs> so now you know, one recipe of whipped ganache tops. Well, I would say tops a double recipe. Then you just eat the rest. All right, ready to eat? Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, that is a double recipe of squares. That is a double recipe of squares, because I did one sheet pan four times. But you're only getting what you see is about double. So yeah. Um, any questions on anything? Anything, anything? Yes? Going back to the honey thing, yes. when you say that it's, uh, it helps make it last longer, does that theory work for all baked goods, like cookies, you put in a little bit of honey, does that help it? Um, with something like a hard, hard baked cookie, not as well as a as a as a cakey thing. Like a I forgot that's in there. Like a I'm gonna get to the hotel tonight. I'm not gonna have anyone to call. Like the tarts in the oven. Um, more like a financier or a Madeleine or something like that. Is your you'll have more need for moisture preservation in those items. I wouldn't worry about a cookie so much. Yeah. Did I did I any more questions that I, something I totally didn't do that I was going to do, that I said? Any quotes that I said? The, of the fondant cake? Here's what's wrong. The dough is, um, the dough is 750, I think. No, no, the fondant's 750. The, the dough is 1650. That's going to give you enough to do easily a half sheet tray, but I always make, I, I don't, I like to make extra dough no matter what, so I have plenty of wiggle room when I'm shaping it. Easily a half sheet tray. This recipe is just gonna be just short of a half sheet tray. So in this case, I would take this and dump this into ceramic souffle dishes and bake them just to eat them. Um, or give to my neighbors or something like that. For so this is 66%? This is 72%. And so. So which one did you do to 62? The 66 is the one that I would recommend based on okay, so if, if like if you left like in your face dark. Yeah, it's a, it much darker than that. It's a strong one. Okay. We have a 74 organic that I think would hit harder on this okay. because of the makeup of the bean and the roast. But um, I think a 66 would be a, a step down with force, but it would be very pleasant taste. The 66 is great. And, there's a lot of people that put can on this in the dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's a tricky. So, so you a, have to give them jello pudding. Yeah, no. uh, it's a it's a slippery slope with that. And I'm not. I don't mean to make it sound too commercial or whatever. But if there's any question, I know what's there, and th that's why I would recommend. Um, how is it? First thoughts. Is that the heavy whipping cream cold or is it a different? Heavy whipping cream. Um, in my rest, just if I, I base all this off of regular heavy whipping cream that's about 36%. Not about, it's 36%. Sometimes they label it, a lot of times they don't. But if it's higher, it'll be labeled as such. There's 40% here. I was a little nervous to use the 40 because when you start um, upping fats on certain recipes, it can go, it, it can go south quick if, you, if it's not balanced well. Yes? If you don't have glucose on hand, is there anything that you recommend? Corn syrup. So I, honestly, I use that all the time because I, I don't want one of those big buckets of glucose in my house, and that's where I do most of my R and D because um, they're messy. 
Okay, you have both heavy cream and cold cream. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, both heavy whipping cream. The truth is, you could probably do it all with, you could probably take all the cream, heat it, and do the, all the stuff, but adding that cold cream, first of all, helps set that emulsion really great, but then also it cools the thing down. So. What's your typical conversion for um, the grams in eggs and yolks? Uh, yolks, 20 grams, large egg. Uh -huh. Yolks, 20 grams, uh, egg white, 30 grams. 30, okay. Yeah. I never asked about metric the whole, this whole day today. Yeah. yeah. So remember how you like poured it for your molds and then you said you didn't let it and you get it hard yeah. and break it up and use it. So you changed, you changed it because you changed it. The thin change when you add the cold chips into it or whatever and then it's thin tempered. Yeah. So when you use it again, it doesn't matter. When you use it again, if you do a good job tempering and I poured it flat, <coughs> so in case you are, are not I'm uh, sure what she's referencing. Uh, when you temper chocolate, you do your whole day, you temper it, you make a bunch of bonbons. It's still tempered. You pour it out to store it. This is the best storage ever. Pour it out on a new sheet tray with parchment paper. Spread it flat. Even better, if your spatula is really dirty, leave it in that chocolate until it sets. Peel it away. Brand new spatula because all the chocolate stays. But so um, uh, spread it out, let it crystallize fully. And then the next day, break it into uh, wedges and put it in a... Ziploc baggie or some or bucket. And to your question, um, that chocolate is as good as what came out of the factory. So you can use it to seed um, if you want to, or you can just remelt it to then seed that. So it's totally good. Not a thing wrong with it. Yeah, use it for either. And just in case this is a question, no matter how the chocolate looks, if it's the most gnarly, untempered mess you've ever seen, nothing wrong with it. Like that's still totally fine. That goes in your brownies. That can also be remelted and seeded, but nothing wrong with it at all. And I've run into situations where people have tossed that chocolate out sometimes and it makes me feel bad because that's just a lot of expense on that person. So um, absolutely never wasted. And so chocolate, it takes a lot to beat up chocolate. I was once running a tempering machine with full of chocolate for a training session for competition. <coughs> Hindsight. I didn't think of this, I don't know whose idea this was, to store the ice cream machine sanitizer on top of the tempering machine. Two liters of water. And I don't know why I was sitting there, I don't even remember seeing it. I remember it falling into the machine. And that machine never stopped. And I used that for another six hours. And it didn't cease. It cease? No. And the miracle day. I don't know what happened to that chocolate. Um, Your grandpa. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but it, it works. So chocolate can take abuse. Um, okay, any other questions? Oh, it's uh, warring, I think. Mm -hmm. Warring. So if, you, if your chocolate yeah. moves, you can bring it back to temper, see that it's going to come back. Yep. Um, w A R I N G. Um, if your chocolate is totally bloomed, you can fix it on the, on the marble, heating it and tabling it. Totally fix it. Never ever, you'll, you'll never lose shock. Anything else? Anything else? All right, so who's here? Are some of you here for the next? All right. That's going to be, that's gonna be some science-y babble. But um, I'll get you through it. But I think it's an interesting one. How far ahead can you prepare it? Oh, uh, freeze it. Bake it. Make it and freeze it. So, and then just let it warm on the counter. Yeah. Let them warm on the counter if you are able to. Not at all. Oh, if you're concerned, especially if you have the convenience of doing it at home, throw it back in the oven. Cut it up, do your serving sizes, and then throw it in the oven and serve it warm. Put a scoop of ice cream. You'd have to do this last minute or something, but serve it with some ice cream. It would be a mess, but it would be amazing. It would be really, really good. Um, I don't have anything. I have a fork. Curious. It's a very even color. When I uh, over mixed the batch that I made last week, it was a more dense batter. So it was very easy to see the shine that was in the center. A little baked here, a little shiny. It's too wet. I can see creamy mousse still. So I'm going to put that back in. But um, this will take a